Thai Parliament consists of 750 members, 500 MPs who sit for four years in the House of Representatives, and 250 senators with a five-year term. In this explainer, we'll look at the remodeled Senate. 194 of the 250 seats are hand-picked by the ruling National Council for Peace and Order, the NCPO. A further six are reserved for the armed forces leaders, the Supreme Commander, the Defense Permanent Secretary, and the National Police Chief. How about the 50 others? This is where it gets a little complicated. These 50 represent 10 professional and social groups. After an election among themselves, the top 200 were forwarded to the NCPO, which then picks 50 as senators. So, in effect, all 250 senators, except for the six top brass, are subject to the junta's approval. In this election, the Senate has been given considerable extra power. The 2017 Constitution states that normally the 500 elected members of the House choose the next Prime Minister. But for a five-year period starting when the next government convenes, the 250 non-elected senators also join the vote for PM. And that greatly reduces the public's voice in choosing Thailand's new leader. If all 250 members of the Senate vote for the man in charge of picking them, General Brayut Jano Cha, he'll only need a quarter of the House, 126 of the 500 MPs, to get the job. And polls suggest that's quite probable. We could then end up with a Prime Minister who has overwhelming support in the appointed Senate but is opposed by most of the elected MPs in the House, a possible recipe for gridlock. Proponents of the new system believe it will provide the continuity and central leadership that Thailand needs and prevent businessmen turned politicians from seducing a gullible electorate with populist policies and then dividing up the country's wealth for their own enrichment while caring nothing for essential Thai values. Others say the new system is fundamentally undemocratic and has been tailor-made to prevent a win by Pur Thai, the latest incarnation of the party that's won every election since 2001. They argue that the new election rules for the Senate and the House, together with the increased powers of the judiciary, have stacked the deck in favor of the military-led establishment.